this is found on the page 1059. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I've examined him in your presence and found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. <clears throat> but the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for the insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he spoke to them, why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for death. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. <laughs> but with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. This is the word of the Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ian. Now, um, please have a Bible open. Has everyone got a Bible? Because I'm sure Ian and Jane will bring you one. There are some more at the back if anyone hasn't got one. But it says page 1060 on there. The reading started the page before that, as Jan said, page 1059. So if you could turn to page 1059. We're going to do a bit of a treasure hunt in that reading. On Sunday, I think there's going to be an Easter egg hunt. Uh, but we're hunting for treasure in God's word now for the next few minutes. And I've got four questions I'm going to ask you to see if you can find the answers in this passage of the Bible. And we're going to be thinking about the word substitute before I ask you these questions. I wonder if anyone's ever played football or hockey or a team game where you have, say, 11 people in the football team, but 12 people there in the squad to play, and one is on the bench, and somebody gets injured during the game and can't carry on playing. So they come off, and the player who was on the bench goes on in their place to play instead of them, and they're called a substitute. They've gone in place of the other person. Now, the first question to look for the answer in this passage, and I want you to see if you can find the answer and tell me which verse number you get the answer from. So the verses are usually about a sentence long and have those little numbers in between the words. The first question is, what had the Lord Jesus done wrong? What had Jesus done wrong? Can anyone find an answer to that question? If you could give me a wave so I can see where it's coming from, so I'm a bit deaf. Was that you, Pippa, calling something out? Nothing, according to verse 14. No basis for the charges against him. So that Jesus had been arrested, and people were saying, You've got to punish this man, Jesus. 
And he was saying, well, what's he done wrong? There's no basis for charges. So it's easy. Yes. And somebody said 50. Was that Rachel? No, so he said, someone over here said it was Linda. In verse 15, he has done nothing to deserve death. It says at the end of verse 15, doesn't it? Jesus has done nothing wrong. And when in a trial somebody is found not guilty, it means they haven't done that particular thing wrong. Or maybe just that there isn't enough evidence to prove that they've done that thing wrong. But with Jesus, he never did anything wrong. He always lived a perfect, loving life, obeying God, loving God, and loving and serving the people he was with. He did so much good, healing and teaching, and he never did anything wrong, and nobody could say otherwise. Nobody could point to anything that he'd done wrong. Now, the next question. There was a man called Barabbas who gets mentioned. What had Barabbas done wrong? Can you find a verse number that tells us? And would anyone like to call out what had Barabbas done wrong? Somebody say, who said that? Molly said murder. And what does insurrection mean, Molly? <laughs> <laughs> Causing people to riot and rebel. I think if you were Romans in charge of keeping the peace there, you don't want people causing insurrection. So you need to quash that. So Barabbas had been arrested for that. And he'd even murdered somebody, <clears throat> maybe more than one person. He was a terrorist. And which verse did you get that from, Molly? I think it was verse on Anybody? 19, wasn't it? Yes. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for <laughs> murder. So Barabbas had done wrong. One of the other gospel writers tells us that um, the man who saw the name of Barabbas was, he also had the name of Jesus. So there was Jesus of Nazareth, who had done nothing wrong, our Lord Jesus, and there was Jesus Barabbas, Barabbas, that man who had done some terrible things, had done wrong, and according to the law, Jesus did not deserve to be punished, and Barabbas deserved to be punished. Now, the next question is, what happened to Barabbas? And then you will see what happened in the end to Barabbas. See a clue in verse 18 where the Crowd is shouting, release Barabbas. Did that happen or did it say, look carefully? Verse 25 over the page. He, Pilate, the man in charge, released the man who'd been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. That was Barabbas, the one they asked for. So he was set. Three. And the fourth question, what happened to Jesus? Find the same answer, really, at the end of that same verse, 25, can't we? What happened to Jesus? I think you will know what happened to Jesus, even if you can't read it from this passage. Does anyone know what happened to Jesus? He was murdered. He was murdered. He, he was crucified, wasn't he? He was fixed to a cross to die as a punishment. 
Jesus was punished by crucifixion. <clears throat> that was what the crowd had called for uh, when they were saying in verse 21 about Jesus, crucify him, crucify him, punish him, put him on a cross to die. And in verse 25, Pilate surrendered Jesus to their will. He handed Jesus over to be punished by crucifixion, to be put on a cross to die. This is something strange about how this is set out on the screen. <laughs> it's the wrong way is it the right way round or the wrong way round? Surely, if someone's done nothing wrong, <laughs> he should be set free. And if someone's done wrong, he should be punished. But what happened at the cross? was Jesus had done nothing wrong and was punished. Barabbas had done wrong and was set free. There was an exchange, a swap. It crossed over at the cross. Jesus was a substitute. He did not deserve to be punished, but he was punished. And somebody else who did deserve to be punished was set free. Verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching. And the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there held insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, <clears throat> since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Whose substitute is Jesus? Please keep the, the Bible open, page 1060, and we'll think a bit more about that reading that Jan has just read to us, second one, and I could really do with three volunteers to help me just by holding something up. Um, we often, when we have uh, younger children here, um, they're very keen to volunteer. Um, maybe some of the younger people 
might like to volunteer, but no reason particularly why it should have to be a younger person. It could be an older person that volunteers. Thank you, Tim. Middle-aged person. And Ben and Greg. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> right, now, I think we'll, we need one of you to hold this cross, which represents Jesus. I think we'll have Grace holding that one. Name. I don't know if you're going to see. With the very fitting name, yes, Grace. The Lord Jesus, the gracious one, who never done anything wrong. Can everyone see the, the tip on the cross here? Jesus had never done anything wrong, and he was crucified. There he was on the cross. But there were two criminals crucified with him. And so... Uh, one on his right and one on his left. So Ben, if you could hold that one. We don't know what these men had done wrong. Um, sometimes people describe them as thieves, a thief on the cross, but maybe they'd done something like Barabbas had done. Maybe they committed murder and insurrection. I don't think Luke tells us, does he? We don't know exactly what they've done wrong. But... We do know some things from the conversation they had when they were on the cross. Now, we saw that even though the Lord Jesus had done nothing wrong, he was punished as if he had done wrong. He was on the cross taking a punishment. Now, one of the men, representing, uh, that Ben is representing with his cross, called <laughs> out at Jesus. Uh, this is verse 30, 30, no, verse, yes, 39. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at Jesus. He probably said a bit more and a bit more rudely than the words that Luke reports for us, that he was shouting angrily at Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? I thought you were supposed to be the one who would rescue the people of Israel from these horrible Romans who nailed us to the crosses. Save yourself and us. You're supposed to be able to do this and you can't, Jesus. He hated Jesus. He was saying no to Jesus. He was turning away from Jesus. All three were being punished as criminals. This one had done wrong, and as he turned away from Jesus, <clears throat> he stayed a criminal, a sinner, someone who had not only offended the Romans, but was rejecting God. Behind the punishment that the Romans were giving was God's punishment. And Jesus was taking God's punishment, but this man said no to it. He hates Jesus. He rejected Jesus. He said no to Jesus. He turned away and he kept the punishment on him. The other man, uh, represented by the cross, Tim is holding, said a very interesting thing. Verse 40, the other criminal rebuked him. He told him off, he said, you're wrong. Don't you fear God, he said, <coughs> since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we're getting what our deeds deserve. So whatever they had done, it was something that deserved to be punished. But he says to he says about Jesus, but this man has done nothing wrong. He could recognize that Jesus was good. And as he turned to Jesus, obviously he couldn't physically turn because he was fixed to the cross, but in his heart he turned to Jesus. And Tim, if you can turn that one around, he said. 
Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him with these wonderful words in verse 43. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Set free in heaven with Jesus. As if he'd done nothing wrong. Even though he was a criminal that had done these terrible things that deserved the death penalty, he would get the reward that Jesus deserved. The exchange was taking place, not just as Barabbas found it in terms of the punishment from the Romans, but in God's eyes, this man, who'd not really done anything good. He hadn't had a chance to make up for all the wrong that he'd done. He just turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. You're the king, Jesus. I honor you as my king. And Jesus accepted him and welcomed him and promised to welcome him home with God forever. Isn't that amazing? And as we think about ourselves and how we've not loved God the way God deserves to be loved, and we deserve to be rejected by God and shut out from his heaven, if we turn to Jesus like that man on the cross did, Jesus in his grace, his loving kindness, his generosity that we don't deserve and we can't earn, welcomes us. Now, the good news, of course, is what happened in the rest of that weekend. On the third day, Jesus rose again, and it showed that God accepted Jesus is right. Jesus is good. He's paid the price because he didn't have to pay his own penalty. He was paying it as a substitute. But all those who trust in him, like the man on the cross, on Tim's cross. And so that leaves all of us who all in relation to God deserve to be punished. Are we going to be like the man on Ben's cross? Or are we going to be like the man on Tim's cross? Are we going to turn away from Jesus or are we going to turn to Jesus? Are we going to say no to Jesus, or are we going to say yes to Jesus? Thank you, you great for your help in that. And there we go back to your places. I'd like to lead us in a prayer now. Um, perhaps somebody here might be thinking, I'm not sure I ever really have said yes to Jesus, but that's what I want to do. I want to have Jesus as my king. Like the man on the cross who said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. <coughs> and what that means is that Jesus welcomes us in and we're sure to have eternal life with him. It's not depending on what we then do. We can't earn it or pay for it. And we don't know how long he gives us to live. That man on the cross only had maybe a few hours from then alive and couldn't do anything. Maybe we will have many, many years where we can serve Jesus as our king. We want to put our whole lives in his hands. So if you want to do that, 
in your heart, join with me in this prayer that I'll say out loud now. Lord Jesus, you are King. You're the loving, good King. You always obeyed God. Thank you for your loving obedience to God and the love you showed in giving yourself as a substitute. I'm sorry for how I have not loved you and loved your Father God with all my heart. I turn to you now as King and ask you to let me be one of your subjects, to have you as my King. Remember me when you come in your kingdom. And so however long you give me to continue living in this life, help me to love and serve and obey you as King. Thank you for your promise of welcome. Amen.